Hello and welcome back to episode two of the Lonely Man podcast. So today is not uh, the best day for recording. It's the 28th of May. So going off of what I did previously, I should have already uploaded this. For example, let's have a quick gander. Uh, I think I think it's over a week by sure. Uh, let's see quickly. So the 19th the 18th of May was when we last uploaded, so it's been 10 days. So, in fact, we should have uploaded on the 25th. So, that's my bad. Um, but we're back. I'm still technically doing it week on week, if you if you want to consider it like that. Um, I don't need these on anymore. That's fine. Uh, but, yeah, welcome back. My name's Ollie. I don't think I actually introduced myself last time. I kind of presume that people will have watched from previous but if you're just watching this for the first time my name's ollie uh i am the lonely man in the lonely man podcast and today we're going to talk about a couple different things first off fun fairs uh quite a nice little thing to talk about quite an interesting topic i actually went to one recently so and that's one of the reasons i want to talk about it so we i went with my girlfriend to a fun fair in london that's like one of those roaming ones i imagine most of them are roaming I don't think there's many fun fairs that are like stationary constantly because I just don't think they can make their money like that because they're expensive. So we went on the Monday, or in fact, the Monday was not the day I was supposed to upload. The Monday was the day I was supposed to record. No worries. Um, we went on the Monday and we went there. And so normally the way it operates is you buy tickets at the front. Tickets are a scam. Tickets are a big scam. Because, so the normal price, we went on a Monday so it was cheaper, but we'll talk about that in a second. Normal price is £10, 10 tickets. Which, a pound per ticket seems kind of reasonable when you're buying it. But, all of the attractions and all of the rides and everything cost three tickets. So, if you're only going to buy £10 worth of tickets, you've instantly wasted a pound. To make your money's worth, you actually have to buy 30 tickets because then you've got that extra three at the end to spend. Now, luckily when we went, it was £10 for 20 tickets, but still we get two tickets remaining, which is okay. It's okay. It's not the worst considering we also paid £10 for them. So that means those two tickets are a pound rather than one ticket being a pound. Still, we ended up paying a lot more in the end because then when you get in there, they don't advertise it, but you can actually just pay by card for a lot of these trans uh, like a lot of these rides. Some of them don't accept card, understandable, but a lot of them do. So when we ran out of our tickets or had the two left, basically, it was sort of left to almost. Um, we were like, we may as well at that point start to um, pay by card because it's technically cheaper um, because we don't end up having to buy too many things in a sense. And you get into these issues as well. So, for example, when we walked in, uh, immediately a woman came up to us. So we pay a pound for entry, which is uh, madness that I have to pay for entry and then pay for everything inside. I would normally expect it to be one or the other. You either get free entry and you pay for everything inside, or you pay for entry and you get everything for free inside, besides, of course, food and drinks. But that's just me, I guess. Um, but yeah, we walked in and immediately a woman came up to us going, do you want to buy tickets? Do you want to buy tokens? Uh, reduced price, reduced price. And it's like, Christ. And that's the, that's the way they get you. They expect you to come in and go, oh, tokens. We'll buy, we'll buy 60. And they're like, okay, cool. And you buy 60 and then you do your hour or so there. And then you're like, oh, shit. I, um, I, I don't need this many anymore. And you're sort of sat there and they're non-refundable and you've got a handful of tickets and you're just like, oh. Um, and you're just sort of looking around like, what do I do with these? Because realistically, in everyone's head, that one ticket is one pound. So you're thinking like, if you've got like 10 tickets left, it's like a tenner that you're losing if you just leave with them. And they're just paper. Like, I think I've got them here. Oh, wait. Yeah. yeah. So I've got the two left. They're just literally just one ride token. But this is the thing. It says one ride token. You'd think that means you get to go on one ride with it. Lies. All lies. But anyway, I like it. I like it at the fair. Um, but we spent a lot. So we then went and played some went and played some games. The games to win prizes, you just have to pay by card. I didn't see any any token value for that. So 
we played the can game, and I think I will try and insert a picture of it here, um, of what it is. It's basically six cans stacked up, and you have to throw a ball at them, and if you can hit them all down, this is where it gets interesting though, hit them all down and clear the shelf, you win a prize. Now, my first attempt, poor. I think I left like two up. Second attempt, a bit better. I think I left... Okay, so second attempt was the really good one, actually. Second attempt, I left... I knocked all the cans down. All of them were off the shelf except one. I cheered because I thought I won a thing. And then the lady came over and said, I know you haven't won. I was like, I'm sorry. All of the cans are down. She was like, the shelf's not clear, though. This one's your can. And I was like, ugh, what a scam. So I did a third attempt, which just was was my, it was an okay attempt, but the key for it, and again, I'll put the picture back in, is to hit the bottom corner can. Everyone tries to hit that center one, but you have three balls to throw. So if you hit that center one and anything goes weird, if you hit the, look, you hit the center one and the, the top bits will drop, but then you've still got two cans. And if you haven't cleared any of those cans that have dropped from that first throw, you're done anyway. If you hit the side one, you're hoping that the two above it will sort of fall in that direction and then you can hit the other side one. That's how I see it in my brain. I imagine there's an actual way to do it because they're all realistically cons because they all want to make their money. All I wanted was a, another bulldog toy to be friends with and I'll introduce him for the first time now. Bruce, who is my... Oh my god, he's so big. He's a full-sized replica, replica uh, bulldog. So, he's quite a, quite a cool boy. And we've given him a jumper. The jumper didn't come with him. He did come with this little collar, but the, the jumper was a, a donation from a friend to keep Bruce nice and warm. But I wanted him a friend. There was a friend there for him, and I almost won him like that. And then, of course, we went and played some other games. So there was an air rifle shooting game, nothing interesting. And then finally, the best part about going to the fair, the sweets. So we went and got some candy floss, which is always good fun, candy floss. I've actually got a candy floss maker, and if I'm prepared enough for this... There's a video of me using it. If I'm not prepared enough for this, that looked weird. And I mean, if you're also just listening to the audio of this, which I don't know how you'd be doing that because I haven't actually uploaded it yet unless you're just playing it and just hoping for the best. Uh, well, you didn't miss anything, but there's sweets. So you've got candy floss and things like this, which is a, a mammoth of a task. A giant gobstopper. Now I've made progress on this. Quite a decent bit of progress, but Christ, I forget how difficult these are to eat. That was like, that was like maybe like a couple hours of just like solidly trying to, uh, trying to dent it. I wanted to dent it for this, this podcast just to show the, oh wait, the colours. Look at that. You get all the different layers and stuff. They're made fantastically. Um, so of course it's just like, it's almost like a rubber band ball in a sense. Like you start with, oh, and I've got an example of that, a rubber band ball. So you start for a rubber band ball with a tiny little circle of stuff. So I imagine they start with little balls of sugar and then the way they do it is they just keep coating it and coating it and coating it. So it's like first coat blue into the blue machine, then second coat into the yellow machine. And they're just constantly adding these coats. And I imagine the people that make the giant ones also make the small ones and they just, stop at a certain point I don't know I don't work in the sweet industry but yeah so uh we went into had sweets and candy floss and I think that's like it's fun definitely like it costs a fortune like that was five pounds that gobstopper five pounds everything's like surcharged there because it's like a, a rarity and like a surprise that the fair's there but um they're good fun they are good fun it's definitely um childlike joy like we went on um bumper carts or think in American terms that's dodgems. Uh, we went on bumper carts so we were just like having a laugh with that which is really good fun to be fair. I haven't been on a bumper cart in 
ages and it's absolutely great fun just like you'd go driving around you're always because it was just two of us there i was trying to hit her and i was trying to like drive around and like catch her and stuff but like you've got strangers also just like fully like ramming into you and it's like in normal scenarios you oh, get out of my way but, like they hit you and it's just like you look at them for a second you go oh, you got me oh you got me good and then you get out of there you're like free me now i don't want to be a part of this but um <laughs> they're really good fun then we went on a couple other rides um all of the rides though just slowly crushed me they all work on some sort of like spinning or like going around in like a centrifuge and when you're sat next to someone they're just slowly just pressing into you as you spin faster and um my girlfriend pointed out apparently because we went on the first ride we went on we went on alone and she looked at me and she went they're gonna go faster because we're adults and we're alone and i was like they're not going to go faster because we're adults. They're going to have the same experience. No, no. They definitely went faster. There was points where I was like, am I supposed to tell him that we want to stop? Because like we were just going round. It's just like a, it was just a circle. It was just a, just sending us round and round. And like at one point he was like, oh, okay, like slow. It's like, oh, okay, get re reorganized. And then I can fast round again. It was absolutely madness. I was just slowly dying. Everything of my body was just being compressed into a ball. Um... Almost lost my phone as well. Uh, that's always a good fun. I feel like I freaked out quite a lot because we basically, I we did that first ride. Then we went to the second ride. And while I was on the second ride, I just before it started, I went to like check everything. Like phone, wallet, keys, like ooh, just a little pat. And then it was like, oh, phone's not here. Danger. And I always worry with a, with a carnival because it's like so many people go in and out of carnivals that someone could easily just pick up my phone and just be like, mine now, yoink. And leave so I panicked a little bit the second ride wasn't as fun for me because I was sat there just like my phone I don't want to lose it uh, but don't worry still here um, in fact uh, we called it and a gentleman picked up and it was the gentleman from the first ride who I think all carnies uh, like carnival assistants and like people that operate their rides are kind of sadists 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 are the one that like to hurt people I feel like they just sit there with their control speeding it up speeding it up speeding it up um until they see you like dying and they're like yes this is where i want them and they just leave you there for a bit madness but um yeah we got the phone back um it was actually just on the first ride in the end which was nice i didn't have um any issues with getting it back. i just had to go back and i was like mine please give and he was like hmm did you phone it i was like yes please return and then i got my phone back and then we went on to went on to the the, the waltz i think that's what it's called here Insert image here. I feel like I'm I'm talking to an editor, but like, it's just me. Ooh. Image. Image. I don't know what images I'm gonna put there. Just random images at this point. Um, but yeah, the waltz. Uh, the one where like you sit in like a spinner. It's like a big tub almost that spins while the ride goes round. Man, that one's a fun ride, but there's so one of the guys operating it. He's just like walking around with it Like he's like counteracting all of like the jumps and the bumps He's like spinning some of them himself manually. I'm like why is why is there so much manual operation on this? Like, <laughs> Why is a man spinning my cart? But that was fun. The waltz is good fun because it doesn't pull anyone into anything It just spins which is nice um, And that was really good fun actually and then yeah, we got off of that one and we were so my girlfriend is not a fan of like the the really high rides. I would have gone on some of them. I don't mind a bit of fear, but um, apparently it's apparently it's not not a thing. She's not a fan of them, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna force her onto one. But yeah, that was like our little trip to um, the carnival, which is just always like a really a really good time. I think they're good fun to do. Um, and then just talking about other things that I've done so far this week. Yeah, Wednesday. Wednesday? Wednesday. Wednesday, I think. Uh, we went to the cinema. And we went and saw The Conjuring, the new one, The Devil Made Me Do It. First off, let's just start from like the very beginning of what's so crazy about that. Apparently it's based on real events. Like, I'm going to Google it quickly here. Um, Conjuring, The Devil Made It Do It. Based on true story. Uh, 
It doesn't say. Yeah, the true story of the Conjuring, real life story of Satanist and parent family who suffered for nine years. Like, I said, I said at the start because she, uh, my girlfriend looked at me and she was like, "Look," she was like, "That's based on real things." Neither of us wanted to watch it, by the way. We were kind of keen to go and see Godzilla versus Kong, but um, we there was lots of traffic, made it too late, so we were considering watching The Conjuring anyway. Both not great with horror films, very scary. Um, worth a watch, good fun, but very scary. Uh, not as jumpy, very jumpy. But yeah, she said to me at the start, she was like, oh, it's based on true events. I was like, straight up, I was like, if this is based on true events, I'm going to go home and just off myself. Because demons and Satanists with powers, no, no, I don't want that in this life. Uh, but apparently it is. I don't know how much of it is based on true events. Like, for example, like, a man levitates at one point. Did that happen? Is it mostly just a Satanist? fucking a family over possibly i don't know but i'm just saying that is a it's a great movie but christ the idea that that's real terrifying to anyone you no one can tell me and look me dead in the eyes and be like oh, pff, the idea of demons not terrifying at all no demons are terrifying don't let anyone change your mind on that if you're not scared of demons you're a madman um but it was such a good film uh, we went to uh, Odeon, a Lux one, which is, they're nice. The chairs reclined. That's a, that was a big mind-blowing moment. You just push the button and go right back. Genius. Um, I quite like that, actually. Quite comfy experience. I didn't, I've never been in, like, reclined chairs in the cinema. Um, it was quite an empty screen as well. I don't think many people are going to be going back to cinemas right now. Because it's still, so what, the 28th of the 5th today... I think we got told we can go back into places like this on the 17th. So it's been just over a week since we've been allowed back in um, to like places like cinemas. So um, yeah, it'd be, it'd be good if we, we slowly got back to it, but I don't expect everyone to just jump back to cinemas, especially considering the, the releases aren't great right now. It's mostly just like Peter Rabbit. If, you, if you're a child, you will like that. If not, you might like that as an adult as well. I, I don't actually know. Um, but yeah, so it's been a, it's been a quite a fun little week. We've got some other things planned to maybe go and do some stuff. Um, again, as I said, I may try and vlog some things with the phone. I might get a little tripod thing so I can hold the phone a bit more stable um, and try and vlog some of the stuff we do. Um, like maybe mini golf or something like that just because it'd be fun to to show off some of my life either here or on the main youtube channel considering i said i would post other things and i've yet to post anything even on time so we're gonna work on it we're gonna work on it but next topic of discussion smart tech smart watches all of those sorts of things um just because i i have this and i was thinking about it this morning before I started doing this, and I was like, it's quite an interesting thing to talk about. Um, I don't find them that useful. I have this, and I have an ordinary, like, analog watch. Sorry, I was trying to look for it. You can kind of see it on my table there, where my thumb is. That piece of metal is a just an analog watch. Um, I have tons of junk on that table. Um... But the um, they're they're all right. They're kind of useful. They it's like a gimmick to start with, I think, realistically. And then like the usefulness tapers. I can't find a lot of use for like a a smartwatch. Like there's lots of features on it for sure. But like for example, like I went on the app store last night to have a look at what they they do on there, and like one of them's like a reminder to drink water. I don't need a reminder just to like oh okay. I do need a reminder not to spill my drink, though, over my face. Um, yeah, I don't know why people would pay. It's four ninety nine, dollars like Five quid, right, for realistically what is a timer, but genuinely just something that your brain should go, oh, you should drink a bit more today. I get it. Some people don't drink that much. Like, my girlfriend drinks, like, a cup or two of water a day. It's not great. She drinks more on occasion, but it's not great. I try and force her to drink more. 
uh, not by waterboarding, just by being a, a gentle and friendly drink more water. I'm, I'm worth five pounds, apparently, in that rate. I remind her to drink water. I'm worth five pounds. <laughs> Sounds shitty. I'm worth more than five pounds, but still. <laughs> um, there's just not, not like, that useful. Like, this is the series five, um, and it means I can... Sorry, I was looking at it to see if I could remember. Um, it means that I can, for example, leave my phone at home, um, and I can still make calls using it, because I pay for cell data for my phone, which is connected to my watch. So, I mean, that's definitely a benefit. And I can text with it, obviously, for the same reason. But, um, it, otherwise, it's not that useful. I like tracking my heart rate, just because that's quite fun. So, like, right now... I'll ignore the car outside. I always keep that window open. Uh, right now... Oh, that's very high, is that right? <laughs> Apparently, 90 BPM. I'm stressed. I'm keeping myself pumped for the, the podcast. Um, but, like, that's the only feature I use, realistically. I read texts on it on occasion. Um, and, like, it's definitely, like, uh, good for sort of scrolling through some of your, like, settings and stuff. But, like, otherwise it is just a watch for me with the date on it as well. But my thing, my analog watch has the date on it just in, in the corner. You can still hear me. I'm over here. Oh, I also have. Let's whip out all the watches for the sake of watching. Let's do a little watch thing. Oh, I'm gonna. I need to tidy my table. Full of junk. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. So, we have the the date. Wait for it. Oh, this is gonna be very hard with the um with the light in the background. Do you see that little white square? Kind of. Focus. Oh, there you go. There you go, 28th. So we have the date on there. Oh, this one's still going. Oh, I must have maybe wound it at some point while I was picking it up. Um, so of course I have this, I have this, and then I have this one as well, which is a uh, pocket watch. And it's a family heirloom one. So when I initially got it, um, when I initially got it, I had to get it restored. Uh, let's see if we can get it kind of looking on the camera-ish. Kind of. Um, and it's got a little man tending some cows on the back. When I initially got it, the glass was cracked. So this was completely ruined. Uh, it wouldn't actually, wouldn't actually, I don't know if you can hear that. You can probably hear that. Yeah, I can see it spiking a little bit. Um, so it wouldn't twist. Uh, and you, So you couldn't, basically, the way this works is it has a spring in it that when you twist it, it basically tightens that spring and it slowly then releases that energy. Um, so it wouldn't actually run initially. So I had to get it fully restored. It cost a fair bit to get restored um, because of, I did get it re-silver plated um, kind of thing a big waste of my money considering I can already see some of it coming off um thrilling um and then yeah the actual mechanisms itself uh that needed repairing for like the spring and stuff cost a bit and it was not the the cheapest thing to get restored but I don't mind wearing any of these watches like this does the same thing realistically I don't wear the pocket watch as much I'm not I'm not that bougie I just I got given it as like part of like um like an early inheritance i guess it's my dad's uh but it's like a uh, three generations old now i think it was it was either his dad's or his dad's dad's and then his dad's gave gave it to him he gave it to me i got it restored there's another one there's a there's another one that i really want which is rose gold but i have to prove myself worthy first um, but I, I'm happy with this one, for example. So I got this watch for my 18th birthday. Long time ago. I'm an old man now. Um, but it does the same thing. Like, I use this to tell the time. I don't really, like, yeah, I like the fact that I can see who texts me without, like, pulling my phone out of my pocket and stuff. But, like, there's tons of features on here that I don't use. Like, the walkie-talkie feature. Um, there's Translate on here, though, which I realised... 
only the other day, which is actually really cool. So I've got it set to just French for now. So if I then press here, I can then say what I want it to translate. So, hello, sir, how much is that baguette? And now it'll translate it for me on the fly. So this is quite good for if you're traveling because then I can just click play. Bonjour, monsieur, c'est combien cette baguette? I don't know if you heard that. I'll do that a bit closer because I realized it's quite quiet. Bonjour, monsieur, c'est combien cette baguette? So it just translates it on the fly, which is quite cool um, because I don't speak other languages. Um, but like most of it's not really, most of it's novelty features at this point for me. Um, I can't say there's anything on it that I'm like immediately like, oh my God, that's something I use every day. Um, most of it is just like a, hey, that's cool. Um, it does when you, when you get the calculator up, for example, um, there's actually a tipping function, which again, kind of useful. So for example, you can say like, oh, the meal cost 120 pounds and I want to tip. And then, um, this is going to be hard to show. <laughs> so then you can see that it says 10% tip, 12 pounds, and then you can do how many people you want to split it in between. So if I put people, three, then it'll say, oh, oh, this is dumb. This is dumb. For anyone just listening, don't tune in, because you can kind of see below, below the 132, it says something in grey, and it just says 44 pounds per person. I'm not causing myself to throw myself around any more than that. Um, so like, there are some cool features on it for sure, but like, I don't really use it for maybe what other people use it for. I don't know, like, if there's anyone here who has one and uses it more than me for some feature that I don't know about, I mean, let me know. But otherwise, like, it's just, um, it is just a watch with the date on it. Um, I sometimes don't, like, you're supposed to realistically to get, like, a lot out of it. You are also supposed to wear it day in, day out, and realistically at night time. You're supposed to basically, like, charge it for, like, the hour or so that it needs to charge, maybe at the end of your day and then put it back on and wear it throughout the night um, because it's got a lot to track your sleep and like generally just for like heart rate and stuff. It's not that useful. Um, I tend to leave it on charge overnight, um, but you can of course do whatever the, the hell you want really with it. Um, I will say, I just want to end this podcast in a bit with talking about, because we said we're going to do about 30 minutes each. I do want to talk about, actually, how well received the, the first one was. We got 10, 10 views, pretty good, and we got three comments. Let's have a little, let's have a gander through them, shall we? Uh, just because, you know, you can't go wrong with, with shouting out people that support you. Uh, so first off, Rhiannon McKellen. Uh, we got a heart and a, a little, ooh, and looking forward to episode two. So here we are. And then my father has managed to comment twice. Uh, the same thing, I don't know how he's done it, he's a miracle when it comes to uh, using the internet. But 18 minutes in this time, AJ loved the gin, next time you're home, juniper berries on toast for you. Because as you remember, last episode I ate a juniper berry, and what a poor decision that was, because it tasted foul. <laughs> but no, yeah, thank you guys for the support with this. Um, I think it's a fun series, I definitely want to continue it. As you can see, I've really done episode 2, this should be out today. I can't see any reason why I wouldn't be able to edit this really quickly and put it out today. Um, and then we're just going to try and do episode three a little bit earlier. I'm going to try and aim for a bit more on time. I might aim for every Wednesday. I feel like a nice midweek podcast is quite a fun one. So that'll be hopefully the second. Wednesday the second is what I'm aiming for. So that means I've got to film it within the next four days. So you'll get this one. And then in four days, another one. And then hopefully from there on out, seven days every time. But who knows with me, because I am piss poor so far at scheduling and recording on a schedule. But this has been really great fun. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the topics today. Again, if you guys want me to talk about anything, leave it in the comments and I will have a look into it and we'll have a natter about it in the next episode. So thank you very much for joining me. I hope you all have a fantastic day doing either anything, anything that you do and you dream of, do it, have a great time, and we will see you again soon.